Have you ever wondered what's going through the mind of an interviewer during an interview? In this video, I'm going to be sharing insights on common interview mistakes and best practices that you can use from an interviewer's perspective. Throughout my actual journey, I've interviewed several candidates for different positions, and I figured it might be helpful to share what's going on inside an interviewer's head during the interview and ways that you can stand out from other candidates during the interview. I'm also going to be bedazzling this calculator throughout the video and giving it away at the end, so make sure to stick around. Now, before I get into the video, you're probably wondering why I have decided to bedazzle this calculator. And to be completely honest, I've just always wanted to. I've always wanted a bedazzled calculator. That's just the actuary in me, I guess, but they don't sell bedazzled calculators. So I'm making one. Imagine walking into work one day and saying to your coworkers, hey everyone, I'm gonna go study with my bedazzled calculator. Like, <laughs> I just think it'd be so cool. So I'm gonna start by opening this bad boy. Uh -huh. Beautiful. I think that to match the colors of the calculator, I'm going to use blue and green and maybe some purple. I've also never bedazzled anything before. So we'll see how this goes. I bet I should put the glue on the calculator first and then put the bead on it. That'd be a good idea. Okay. I'm afraid I'm gonna ruin this calculator. You know what I'm realizing? I think this is gonna take a while. Okay, so while I'm doing this, let's actually get into the content of this video. First, I'll start off with some interview advice and then later in this video, I'll go over some common mistakes that I see. During the interview, when you have a chance to talk about your past experiences and the past projects that you've worked on, it is your best opportunity to sell yourself. Take advantage of the opportunity to go into detail about your experiences, what you did during those experiences, what skills you used, who you worked with, what did you learn? How did that experience lead you to apply to this role? How did that role make you a better candidate for this role? Basically, if you have the opportunity to talk about what you've done in the past, that is your best opportunity to show why they should hire you. This is how it's looking about two minutes in. I think it's gonna be cool. For example, if you had an actual internship and the interviewer asked you to tell me about that internship experience, go into detail about what you did. Talk about the specific projects that you did. How did that help your team? What difference and impact did you have? What skills did you learn? What skills did you develop? <laughs> I also don't mean to be pointing at you like with this, I'm gonna put it down. Between you and the interviewer, only you know what you did during that internship experience. So be sure to highlight your accomplishments and your success from that experience. My next piece of advice for you when you're interviewing is actually something that surprised me when I started interviewing other people and I started working on the other side of the interview. And it's that sometimes the questions that interviewers ask really do not have a correct answer. There is no correct solution or answer that they are looking for. Even in technical interviews where the questions require a bit more analysis, the interviewer is more curious about how you would go about solving the problem and what considerations you would take into account. That's why it's so important to think out loud during these types of questions. Personally, I would much rather hire a candidate who explains their thought process out loud and maybe says something slightly off over a candidate who says an answer and it may be right or might be on the right track, but doesn't give an explanation and doesn't elaborate. The whole point of the interview is for us to get to know you as a candidate, how your brain works, how you approach problems, because when it comes to the work that you do on that job, there's not always going to be a clear answer. So we wanna know what would you do in those situations? Are you able to connect the dots between different methods of doing things, different considerations, and different tidbits of knowledge to come up with an answer for a complex issue? All right, so this is how we're looking so far. I think I'm gonna have to make one of these for myself. Next, if at the end of the interview, the interviewer asks you if you have anything else to add, don't be afraid to use that space to talk about any experiences and skills you haven't yet gotten to talk about. For example, if the interviewer asked you about your previous actual internship experience, but they didn't ask you about your barista role at Starbucks, but you think what you learned in that role would be really applicable to the role you're currently interviewing for, bring that up. Because an interview is such a short period of time for us to get to know you, don't be afraid to show off your smarts. Otherwise, we won't know how smart you are. Okay, I'm gonna try and share another piece of advice while decorating because this is going by pretty slow. 
If at the end of the interview, the interviewer asks you if you have any questions for them, ask them questions. If you don't ask questions, it could come off as a sign of disinterest in the role. If you are interested in the role, you want to know about the type of work that they're doing. You want to know what the schedule is like. You want to know about the people that you work with. You want to know about the company because that matters. I would stay away from, however, the cringy type of questions, the ones that you see on LinkedIn that are just a little bit odd. I can think of one in particular that I know I personally don't like, and that is, is there any reason why you wouldn't hire me? or something along those lines. Is there any concerns that you have about my candidacy? I don't like that question because it automatically plants a seed of doubt in an interviewer's mind. Also, if we do have a concern about your candidacy, we're probably not gonna tell you. So instead, you should ask questions that are relevant to the role. You can ask questions about the start date. You can ask questions about training opportunities. You can ask questions about what departments or teams will you be working with in this role? All right, update. This is how we are looking. It's been about an hour since I started doing this. So I am gonna do between the buttons and up here, just not the white part. So it will still be usable. You will just have to memorize all these um, green ones because they're gonna be covered. Moving on to common mistakes that I see. Number one, we as the interviewers can tell when someone is applying to a job just for the sake of applying to a job. If you are applying to actual science roles, whether that's an internship or a full-time role, you should be familiar with the actual societies. So the SOA versus the CAS, you should be familiar with the exam process and you should know what an actuary does in general. There are candidates who have amazing skills, but then in the interview, when we ask them, why do you want this job as an actuary? It's hard for them to come up with an answer. And that leaves us, the interviewers, in a difficult position because we see your skills, we see how great of a candidate you can be, but the passion for actual science needs to be there when the people you are competing against for this role are passionate about actual science. Skills can always be developed. We can always teach someone how to code something. We can always teach someone how to do more of the technical work, but we can't give them the passion for actual science. So if you are a candidate who loves actual science, who likes insurance, then make that evident. You should also know what the role you are applying to consists of. So before the interview, take a look over the job description again, where you applied for the role, to see what the job responsibilities are. Ideally, you should prepare for the interview based off of the job description. That way you can tailor your resume and how you explain your experiences and your skills towards the job description to show how your skills and experience directly match what they are looking for in the role. Another thing that I see when interviewing people, which is not necessarily a mistake, it's just something that I notice that I think could be improved, is if you don't think that you are the most knowledgeable or the most qualified for the role, don't point that out. Don't say to the interviewer, hey, I'm not the most knowledgeable about this and I probably don't have the skills you're looking for. For all you know, the interviewer, based on your responses so far throughout the interview, could think that you are really smart and that you are totally qualified for the role. But then when you insert a sentence that says, I don't think that I myself am qualified for this role, that leaves the interviewer wondering why you're saying that. Imagine I went up to apply for a job and I said, hi, I'm Bella and I would really like to work for your car mechanic shop, but I know nothing about cars. The car shop owner would probably wonder why I'm applying for the job in the first place if I don't believe that I am knowledgeable about cars at all. Versus if I went up to the car shop owner and I said, Hi, I'm Bella and I'd like to work on your cars. The owner would then ask me, what experience do you have? And I could talk about, oh, I've just always been so interested in cars. Um, I always watch them on TV. I, I don't know, I'm so fascinated with my own car. And although in this example, I don't have any direct work experience, my passion for cars in this example is evident. So the car shop owner might just hire me because he sees the potential that I have because of my passion for the work. An important thing to note is that the interview is a place for the interviewers to determine your level of knowledge and your level of qualifications. So don't immediately disqualify yourself. That's up to us to decide. 
However, if you do feel that way, if you do feel like maybe you're not the smartest or the most qualified to get the role, spend some extra time developing those skills, gaining that knowledge so that next time when you go into an interview, you are confident in yourself and your abilities. I actually committed this mistake a lot during my freshman year of college when I hadn't passed any actual exams yet, I would go into interviews and I would say, I know I haven't passed any actual exams yet, but I really want this internship, basically is what I would say. Although it's great to be honest and transparent about your abilities and what you've done, I could have instead talked about the actual science classes that I was currently taking and what I was learning in those classes that would have been directly applicable in that internship. I could have also spent that time that I was looking and applying for roles studying for an actual exam so that I could be a more competitive candidate. Two hours later. All right, you guys, after two and a half hours, I finally finished. Are you ready to see the bedazzled calculator? Dun, dun, dun. I love it. The calculator is completely usable. You can turn it on, you can type, you can do everything you usually would do. You just can't see the the green um, letters that are usually above the buttons because I covered them. But I'm really proud of this. I'll show a close up here so you can see the calculator better. But I really liked that I used like a white for where the white keys are. And then I used green gems for where the green text is. Before I talk about the giveaway part of this, let me finish this video. The last couple things I want to say about interviewing is number one, be confident, have good presence, be confident in what you're saying. Number two, it's okay to take time to think in response to a question that they ask you. Also, make sure you find a quiet space to take the interview in. Make sure all your windows are closed, make sure people in the other rooms aren't talking, make sure it's a quiet space so that we can hear you and there's no distractions. If you're in college and you're in a library and it happens to get really loud, you can't control that. But just generally, if you can find a quiet space, that'd be better. And finally, send a thank you note after your interview. Something like a short little email thanking the interviewers for their time or thanking the person who set up the interviews for you can go a long way in making a good impression. Okay, it is past my bedtime. I didn't think that this tiny little calculator would take two and a half hours, but I think because the details are so intricate, um, it took a while. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that the interview tips I shared were helpful. And if you would like to win this calculator, all you have to do is subscribe to this YouTube channel, Bella the Actuary, and comment down below. With that, I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.